M3D Performance in Full Chip by Panoramic Technology. This is an alpha version of the software. So our Mask 3D effects, M3D, um, basically is an approximation to the rigorous uh, solution to Maxwell equations which is usually done with FDTD or RCWA um, or uh, different rigorous simulators but it's called M3D effects and um, the speed of our M3D implementation is as follows without M3D the previous example which was 480 tiles on 40 cores took 102 seconds adding the M3D effects brought it to 142 seconds so it's it's uh, looks like you know less than 50 percent speed hit for adding M3D at least when you don't include the resist so to benchmark the accuracy this is just a very preliminary benchmark there's lots more needs to be done but what we do is we compare the solution that we get in Hyperlith with the solution or the resist pattern that we get in full chip. So I'm going to cut to Hyperlith. And so I've set this up. This is the same layout. And we use the uh, GDS multi site. This is just standard Hyperlith work. We use the GDS multi-site. We pick an area that we want to simulate. In this case it's 2500 by 2500 nanometers and it's centered around this region here where we have this line coming uh, and then this line going here. So when you simulate that you get this image and we can zoom in and um, let's just change the scale of the color scale here. And so this image we're going to compare with what we get in um, full chip. So going over to full chip, here you see we have uh, the same region of the chip selected, centered around this area here. And we'll just press the simulate button. And this is actually running with just one processor. Uh, I think it's probably using uh, a few cores. And uh, it's done. This simulated this area very quickly. And this is with the M3D effects. And this was an un-OPC'd pattern. We're just comparing the same un-OPC'd pattern in both cases. And um, we have the option to, to keep the, um, to get the actual uh, image back and um, I think it's this image here and we can compare this image directly with the hyperlith one I think it's this region here and we can put a threshold at the same location that we had and then we can compare these contours um, I've done this and I'll cut back to the presentation to show you that. So this is a blow up of those two regions. The left side is Hyperlith with Tempest and the right side is Aerial Image uh, coming from full chip with the M3D. And this is, I'm not making any CD measurements. This is, you know, somewhat qualitative, somewhat quantitative, but I've put contours at 0 0.1, 0 0.15, and 0 0.4 to show that the match is pretty good through um, not you know not just at one threshold but at several. So in other words the aerial image is matching from top to bottom. Um, and there are some differences here you can see at this low contour this is the 0.1 uh, contour that this one is pinching on the full chip but that's you know quite away from nominal which would m be somewhere uh, closer to the 0.15 contour which is you know uh, in this area here so 
Um, that's, you know, very qualitative. We also have this example here where we ran this pattern. It's just um, 100 by 100 nanometer. These are wafer dimensions. This is a 40 nanometer wide line by 500. This is 30 by 500. And this is 20 by 500. Here we're comparing M3D with Tempest with the thin mask approximation. And we had to anchor the thin mask to this CD here in order to make the comparison. Without anchoring it, the thin mask is way off. But when you anchor it, it gets a little bit better. But um, we did not anchor. We used the same threshold between M3D and the Tempest for a comparison. So basically, the black and the blue curves line up quite well. Um, only these first three features, this 20 nanometer feature, did not print. And um, the thin mask is a matching this OK. It's got some pullback here relative to the rigorous solutions. But once we look at this feature, it's quite different. And then it's even stronger difference here for this feature. So this is highlighting the importance of the M3D effects and their accuracy. So this is only an introduction. Um, we've got still a lot to do, but the M3D does look promising. We have more rigorous, much more rigorous quantification of accuracy at advanced DUV nodes and um, quantification of the benefits of M3D over Kirchhoff. We need to extend to EUV. We think we can do this. I think we can optimize for speed and memory, and I think we can get even more accuracy out of it. But this is only an introduction, and so far our M3D formulation does look pretty promising.